<laughs> Is there a video in that? That's why. Is it is it working? Yes. Don't ever say it again. Don't ever say it again. Ever. Please. I know, but by the way, you guys are streaming. We're streaming right now, so say hi. Nobody's watching it. There's like zero viewers. Oh, there's one. What's up, dude? What's up? What up? Let me say something to my dad. Say that to your dad. Bye bye. Chill. ¿Cómo estás? Chill. Bye. I guess it's good. I'm Nick. Hi. Urban girl right here. You're handsome, dude. You're handsome. <laughs> We're stalling. <laughs> What's that? How's that? Streaming a live stream. That's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, um, Jose. Do you guys have a backup computer just in case? So start prepping all that right now. You want me to hand me your grades? Grades? It's too cupcakes. It's too cute. Oh, it's right over there. No, it's here. fun to read. These are always the fun stuff. Passing notes in class. I used to get caught all the time. And the teacher would pass it in front of everybody. This is going to be a great video. Guys, come back and watch this again. It's not working. What is this? What is this? Who gave, who gave me this? What the heck, dude? Are you not? Are you? It won't win. Okay, let's go. To, let's go with. Uh, hey, you guys, Jose, your team up here. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, great news. 
of my personal space. I might have gotten it. I put it in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, go ahead, sit down. Huh? <laughs> All right. Dude, can I get the? I got seven percent. I got twenty-six. Watch this. Okay, let me know when you guys are ready so I can share this. Thank you. Watch this. Okay, let me know when you guys are ready so I can Sorry, share the... Sorry for the technical difficulties. We are a new company, so stuff like this. <laughs> um, as just as a disclaimer, uh, this is a fiction, it's a business. Um, we start this from scratch. From scratch. I know we're trending by. Um, <laughs> we really wanted to challenge ourselves by doing something from scratch. Um, all our designs were done from scratch. Uh, Samantha did a big up job doing it. I really congratulated her on that. Good job, Sam. Um, so, on to our presentation. Uh, we are a Capital City Brewery. I am Michael. Crystal. Jafari. Stephanie. 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 <laughs> Yeah. All right, uh, Capital City Brewery is located in the heart of Silicon Valley in San Jose. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm straight from the capital city, the first capital city in California, um, which is where our name happened to come from. Um, San Jose is full of history everywhere, everywhere you walk. Uh, there's a little bit of history, it's a very old city, but just a lot of people don't know a lot about it. So our goal was to give people of uh, San Jose a craft brewery that encompassed our past, present, and future. Uh, our craft brews only have the finest uh, yeast and hops ingredients and are handcrafted. Um, the beers range right from my case to stouts to lagers. Uh, we currently have three beers in our line. Uh, our top of the line beer is called the Fairmont IPA. It is named after the hotel in Little Park. In, the, in San Jose's vibrant city. Um, the Fairmont Hotel is, it overlooks the San Jose skyline and hosts dignitaries, uh, celebrity CEOs, noted scholars, and currently President Barack Obama is staying there right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a presentation, not tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> we think of class. And elegance, you do think of the fair lines. <laughs> uh, our second beer in the, in the line is called Winchester Chocolate Stout. It is named after the famous Winchester House that is renowned in the seventh day. Our last beer in the line is called the Tech Valley Lager, obviously a homage to the vast tech industry that we the down today. And here's a little bit more information on our beers. Uh, <laughs> video done by Jamie.
the, the Bay Area has a plethora of well-known craft breweries. You have uh, you have Lagunitas and your brewing company, and of course your beer company also based out of South Bay. The craft brewing business is growing. Uh, South Bay is stuck in a very awkward position in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So San Jose sometimes goes under the radar. So our goal is to provide our clientele with good beer, and also <coughs> to know where the beer came from and the history behind the community and city. And we feel that, and we feel that's why our company separates us from the rest of the groups, San Jose and the Bay Area. Uh, one of our target audiences is the employees of the tech industry, since the sector of San Jose is continuously to growing, uh, with people from other countries and out of town. Uh, we all know that most people enjoy beer, obviously. So targeting that sector and also introducing the city for the work and the culture behind it is a two-way street business class. We also focus on targeting the 25 to 35 years group that have been by some more political based posts on our Facebook page. Statistics show that most people who like ideas and craft groups are of an older age group. Uh, but they simply can afford to buy better beer and have a refined taste palate. In general, though, our beer is for everyone, as long as you want one. <laughs> <laughs> beer is a university like beverage and conversation starter. The craft brewing industry is the only beer industry that is rapidly growing, and the other company wants to capitalize on that growth and bring the spotlight to the center. Um, now, I'm going to Head over the presentation to Crystal. Uh, we'll talk about it. Crystal. So we had a pretty good presentation that uh, talked about introducing our biggest right here. Uh, one of them, uh, one of our popular ones, was on the South. So we ran a campaign through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we got some a pretty good uh, engagement from that. Uh, we just kind of went with the same, let's go with Flash Hub, which is very nice to hear it. And then with the uh, Sam's original uh, artwork that we stuck on a box of stout and black. Um, it was, like I said, it was pretty popular. Uh, we launched it on April 10th, and it was very popular on Facebook, which there were uh, 40 people. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see how many people saw your post on Instagram or Twitter, but judging from the statistics that we found through Twitter, uh, we figured that at least 12.3% of our followers might have seen it at the time that we um, So, a little bit more on Twitter. Uh, we actually got a good following on Twitter. We had over 100 followers at any given time. Uh, and we found that the highest engagement uh, was Thursdays at around 4 a.m. So I'm guessing you know that. <laughs> uh, you know, we like to talk about beer on Thursday night. Uh, we found that there was little to no engagement between the hours of 11 a.m. and 6 p.m., which is expected. Um, but however, the highest engagement, like I said, Thursday. 4 a.m. Also 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, which is interesting. Um, so our potential reach on Twitter was actually 19,828 people because of our retweets from other craft breweries uh, in the area and across the nation. Uh, we, there's actually a capital city brewery in Washington, D.C. So with an O and an A. So a lot of people would tweet at us like pictures and things like that, like, you know, saying that they were at Capital City Brew, and I said, well, cool, so I would retweet it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was pretty cool. So it, it kind of legitimized the business a little bit more. It got some of the things. Our, our highest reach was on our St. Patty's Day, and we also released the Crown on IP. Um, so all in all, I think that our Twitter and our campaign for the Winchester Stout is going to be really well. And as long as that was probably a little bit more about it. Um, so, in keeping with the Winchester campaign, we pulled our two most popular uh, pictures that we posted that day. The first one is just releasing the logo. Um, you can see you got one like by Mark Pike. And then uh, the second one kind of had reference to do with the um, blood red and blue that was happening around that time. We figured that it went perfectly with the spooky Winchester Mystery House and, you know, the green and everything. Um, that one received two likes. And um, overall, with Instagram, I believe um, <laughs> the popular things just had to do with sports and going out to Mars. This um, graph shows the Facebook um, 
graph of the Winchester campaign. As you can see, the blue line, that's um, how many people we've reached. Uh, the likes and clicks were kind of more low. But, so we started it around 10 a.m. And by um, 10 a.m., we had already reached 41 people. But our most popular time was starting at uh, 2.30, where we reached 57 people, 3 p.m., 49, 3.30, 43. So as the day kind of progressed, um, we, got, we reached less and less people. So 2.30 was kind of our prime time. Also at 2.30, we got two likes and nine clicks. Um, and I you can see Facebook, nine posts reached 350 people with 29 clicks and six likes. Uh, Twitter had two tweets, uh, one favorite, and Instagram two photos with three likes posts. And now Sam's going to go on to our next campaign. So uh, in April, uh, downtown Temple hosted what was called Your Walk. So uh, basically from six to nine, there's actually 28 shops, 28 kids and 28 pieces, which is pretty cool. So we found this as an opportunity not to kind of, you know, are here specifically, but to engage the breweries that were there so that they would put on our stuff and we would together. So this one we posted kind of a foreshadowing it, getting people ready. So you can see it was on the 16th, but the event here was on the 23rd. So we thought we would just engage people that way. Um, we reached actually more people kind of promoting it than on the actual day, as you can see. So yes. And then just kind of the tweet we did, it was kind of like instructions on, hey, when you get there, make sure you have this and this. You know, um, telling people, make sure you have the on your map, because that's to get in and out of the door. That's no beer for you. So, yeah. And then on Instagram, I think it was really successful because it's very, you know, very visual. And there's brewers and there's beer, and it's just, it's easy to engage on Instagram. And what was nice was the beer lot was liking a lot of their stuff. So we were um, on the hashtag, we looked at the beer lot, it's a lot of us. We were all over that hashtag. Uh, so that was really nice. Um, a lot of people seemed to like this one here at Moe's, and it was the grapes. So that was great. And then, yes, this is just our Facebook page. In the beginning of the day, when we're kind of promoting it and how that went, um, we got a lot of, like, you can see a lot of here, a lot of people, kind of went down later on. But then later, as you can see from Instagram, we were reaching a lot more people. So, um, yes, and then photos, what is that in my kind of highlighted for that So now, Miss Jamie is going to take a look. I mean, Joe Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go by Jane. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have a we really we switch off on this. But anyway, so I'm going to deal with the SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Sorry if I speak too fast, but I'm kind of really out of time. But so one of our strengths we did your facts of the day um, just allowed, because our target market was not necessarily college students walking out of 7 Eleven with a case of Keystone Pipe, those people actually have to sit down and enjoy their beer. So, um, uh, the most seen beer fact that we had was when British brewers tried to send their pale ales over to India, the beer would go bad during the long ocean voyage. Beer makers began to add extra alcohol and hops to help with the preservation. This inadvertently created a new style of extra bitter, extra powerful beers called IP, uh, Indian pale ales or IPAs. So, um, when beer drinkers and the beer drinking community would see this, it would allow them to, I guess, have a more richer and deeper understanding of the history behind beer. So that when you're actually sitting down having a conversation with your friends, you can think about all the awesome things that can from here. Another cool thing that we did with these found beer related articles is we can always put these articles within a week of them actually being posted wherever they were posted. So the um, the most seen and shared uh, beer related article was an article talking about the 17 new beers that you should try this spring. Uh, by having beer related articles on our Facebook page, it allowed us to engage the whole beer community. Uh, this strengthens our whole campaign because we're no longer just promoting ourselves, we're promoting these writers, we're promoting these bloggers, we're promoting these people. <coughs> At the end of the day, we all need a little bit of extra promotion. Uh, the last one of our strengths that is probably the most important one, everybody knows this is San Jose, and everybody knows this is Sharks territory. So we would be super remiss if we didn't include anything about all the Sharks games going on. So um, uh, 
CCB allowed us a chance to throw in Sharky with a few beat LA uh, signs when they were playing. So that allowed us to engage the local San Jose area. Because we are a local group, we would, if we were real, we would definitely support all the local people around us because our company would survive. So uh, moving on to weaknesses. It was really difficult to find an adequate time for us to post tweet Instagram, as you can see. Um, 4 a.m. on, it's kind of hard for us all the week out, especially since we have school and whatnot. And uh, it was really difficult for us to coordinate between all social platforms, what exactly we want to do with regards to upcoming kind of events, holidays, etc. And so at times it came up slightly disjointed. Uh, and having a fictitious beer company was actually really difficult. Uh, it didn't allow us to do the things that we really wanted to do, like show that events, give away free beer, and put away those events, of course, and like talk about like how we started and all that other information. So uh, moving on to opportunities, uh, one of the cool opportunities we had during the semester was to talk about uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, yeah, it's about Irish tradition, but most people celebrate it as a holiday of alcohol, so we were able to engage the drinking community in that way. Um, another thing we do, uh, did was with festivals and campaigns like the Beer Walk, we were able to engage that whole drinking community and uh, live tweeting through events so that people can stay up to date with what's actually happening if they can't actually do that. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is threats. So, there are actual breweries on Facebook that actually like sent you discount offers and all that stuff. So they kind of took away our thunder because we couldn't give away anything. And the only reason to come check our page would be for the interesting articles and content that we actually had up there. Um, so that brings me to the next point, which is loss of engagement. Uh, finding engaging content is also just difficult just because both through comments, tweets, and 